to the beginning, with the memory of the past loop already fading fast. But while it lingers, I know there's hope. We're not doomed to repeat our failures in an eternal loop. This is a spiral. A fictional poet once said, beyond the shadow you settle for, there is a miracle illuminated. I will not settle for a shadow. I'll find the miracle through the night. It's not just victims and monsters. I see now there are heroes as well. We can find our way through the darkness. We will break through the surface. We will emerge into the light.
I'm good, Mom. How are you? This trip might take a little longer than I thought. I'm sorry I've been gone so much lately, Logan. Oh my god, Mom. It's not your fault. People get all murdery. What happened? Just... work stuff. Right. Well, Dad and I are just watching the latest episode of Night Springs here. Mom, it's so good. No spoilers! I'll let you get back to the show. You were supposed to wait and watch with me. I love you both. This is what happens when you go on work trips, Mom. Love you too. And say hi to Casey. Tell him to stop brooding so much. Logan! I will. Bye, kiddo. Logan thinks you should try cheering up. <laughs> Snarky kid. Wonder where she gets that from. It can't be a coincidence that another body turns up just as we arrive in town. Feels like the killer's leaving us a message. Hmm. I'm glad you're on this case with me, Anderson. It's right up your alley. You should take lead. Think of me as the backup. Okay. Any words of advice? Nothing that would cheer anyone up. Here we are. Cauldron Lake. Time to get to work. A deputy was supposed to be here to show us to the crime scene. There's the car, so where's the deputy? <laughs> Eaten by a bear? I'll check out that map. I think I hear someone. I'm not walking all the way back Could down. be our deputy. I can go take a look. Hey, over here. Hey there. Agent Casey, right? Sheriff Breaker said you'd be coming by to take over the case. You're half right. Anderson? Saga Anderson. I'll be leading this case. Seems you already know my partner, Alex Casey. Shoot. Sorry about that, ma'am. I'm Deputy Mulligan. I just figured that, you know, that, uh... Where's those damn gonna show up, Mulligan? Federal agent's right here, Thornton. My partner, Thornton, <laughs> down at the crime scene. He's not what you call the sharpest axe in the shed. What can you tell us about the crime scene? Tell them about the heart. I was getting to that, Thornton. <laughs> well, we reckon there are some uh, organs that are currently outside the victim's person when they should be, well, you know, inside. Were there any witnesses? Yeah, a couple out of towners. I wonder what they were doing sneaking around the woods at night. Oh, the city folk. They're pretty suspicious. Not that we have anything against city folk, cried Thornton. But don't worry. Sheriff Breaker took them back to town a while ago. I want to see the body. How do we get there? Oh, sure, that's real simple. Just through the hole in the fence, down the hill towards the lake, around the old convenience store. You can't miss it. Everything's been closed since the area was fenced off. The store, the campground, all of it. Hey, Mulligan, tell them I'm here, wait me. I'll show them around. They got it, Thornton.
Before we get to the crime scene, there's time to review the facts of the case, so fuck. I need to think through the facts of the case. The Mind Place. My version of the Mind Palace technique. To sift through clues and work the case. Building the Mind Place again for each case. Using each field office as a model in my head. The facts are on the board. Everything we know about the previous murders. Worth taking another look. I see you're already hard at work, Anderson. Close to cracking it? We're just getting started. Let's head down the hill to the crime scene. Hey, Casey. You putting me in charge. Why now? Look, Anderson, you're a better detective than I am. You've cracked cases that had the rest of us baffled. I don't want to slow you down. Are you thinking of retiring? You know what happens to cops who say this is their last case. Mm-hmm. Fucking nature gives me a headache. It's too much sky. Not a bad place to get murdered. Hmm. If getting back to nature is your thing. Damn. Should have brought an umbrella. I like the rain. The only thing around here that feels like home. You think the local law had the sense to put up a tarp? Hmm. If they did, next coffee's on me. Deputy Thornton, I take it. That's me, at your service, ready to get this case solved. Now the body's behind the store. Come on, I'll show you. So, FBI, huh? That's so cool. Hunting down psycho serial killers and shootouts with the mob. You forgot the UFO cover-ups. Those are real? You guys hiring? Thornton, he's joking. Let's just see this body, shall we? Now this is the scene of the crime. We found him on the table. Now he didn't touch nothing. You know, procedures and stuff. Thanks, deputy. No tarp. You owe me a coffee. Okay. Let's start by examining our guest of honor. Does this fit the M.O. of the previous murders? Body is positioned on the table. Ritualistic. Another body turns up just as we arrive in town. Coincidence?
Inside stab wound. Chest cut open. Heart removed. The killer left the heart right next to the body. Bruising on the wrist from the cargo straps holding him down. Heart removed from chest, strapped by the wrists. Definitely matches the previous murders. But this time the heart and the straps were left behind. More clues to work with. This makes four murders that we know about. Who is our victim? Who killed him? Need to find more clues. Multiple people were here. Multiple killers? Someone was drinking beer. They spent time here, waiting. Large amount of blood on the table. The victim died here. Prints indicating multiple killers. Quite the party. Did they plan for the murder to happen here? Any idea who the victim is? Oh, I sure do. His name is Nightingale. He was FBI. He came to town about 13 years ago. Now, I haven't heard a word about him since. Well, until now. Nightingale? Robert Nightingale? Oh, yeah. Yes, you probably knew him. Brothers in arms. Oh, and sisters. So you knew our victim? Well, I didn't recognize him in his current state. But yeah, I ran into him a few times at Quantico. Never worked any cases together. After his partner got killed in the field, he went off the deep end. Got the boot pretty quick after that. So what happened to Nightingale after the Bureau let him go? I only know the rumors. Depression led to booze, booze led to paranoia. He got some wild ideas in his head, chased ghosts until he fell off the map. Guess he ended up here. I bet there's more to that story. But no happy ending. Nightingale went missing 13 years ago, 2010. The same as all the other victims. Certainly fits the pattern. Makes me wonder what was going on that year. Probably something this town wants to forget. Robert Nightingale, ex-FBI, came to Bright Falls 13 years ago. Someone left in a hurry. Knocked the tripod over. Was it for a camera? I think that's everything. For now, at least. <laughs> they planned for the murder to happen here. Passing the time with equipment ready. They were waiting for him. But why Nightingale? He's been missing for 13 years. Why here? Why now? Profiling. 
get into the subject's head. See what they saw. Feel what they felt. Use whatever I know about them to guide my intuition to a revelation. Piece it together. Agent Nightingale has been MIA for 13 years. How did he end up here? Up from the lake that's not a lake. It's dark. He was there too. Do you want to go around the lake until he says otherwise? Robert Nightingale came from the lake before his murder. Nightingale was chosen as the victim. Why? Click the switch. It goes click. Doing the final draft Lights on uh, Alan Wake 2. But somebody's home. Somebody's home. This wasn't some random act of violence. This was a ritual. And Nightingale a component. They didn't see him as a person. More like a container for something. This mug always cheers me up. The lake is connected to Nightingale somehow. Casey, let's take a look down by the lake. Lead the way. Sounds good. Uh, this way, right? Right. Well, okay. Well, I'll just, uh, I'll just wait here. This one of your hunches, Anderson? Did something happen at the lake? I think Nightingale came up from that direction. From the lake. Probably looking for shelter. Safety. They were waiting for him. When you're ready, I'd love to hear what you put together so far. Sure. It's not that complicated. Nightingale was out in the woods alone at night, possibly nude. The killers knew he was here, ambushed him, dragged him to the campgrounds, strapped him to the table, cut his heart out. But then they were interrupted by those witnesses, the bookers. There's a piece of paper on the ground. I didn't know trees got... Tracks. Barefoot. Nightingales? They come out from under the boulder. It makes no sense. A page full of text on one side. Not a printout. Written with a typewriter. Old school. Lines scratched out and edits added with a pen. Mm-hmm. Like a manuscript. A page of a story. Hmm. The killer left a message. It's for us. The text is about us. The victim was one of their own. FBI Special Agent Robert Nightingale. And then there was the page they found. The first step down into terrifying depths. Reading, Reading the, the words. words. These, These words, words felt, like a message. felt like a message. Someone knew they were here. Someone playing a game with them. An invitation. How could they not accept? Even if they knew it would end up hurting them. Someone's been watching us. Playing a sick game with us. You were right. This is right up my alley. Nightingale came this way. Either he dropped this page, or the killers left it for us. I should profile Nightingale about this page.
found a page in the woods. A story about these events. What is Nightingale's role in this? I carry his words close to my chest now. Inside. The awful truth. You must dig it out. Something was put inside him. In his chest. I must find out what. The victim was one of their own. FBI Special Agent Robert Nightingale. Gone missing here 13 years ago. Now he had suddenly turned up. Only to be murdered in a brutal ritual on the very day of their arrival. And then there was the page. This page. The first page that they had found. Not the last. The first step down into terrifying depths. Secret truths trembling beyond the threshold. Reading the words. These words. Felt like a message was a message someone knew they were here what they were doing someone playing a game with them leading them on an invitation how could they not accept the sheer audacity of this impossible mystery presented to them even if they knew it would end up hurting them He came from the lake, but his tracks make no sense. Found all I can here. Time to properly examine the body. See what I can find inside. Casey, I think something's been put inside Nightingale's body. Let's tell the deputies to get the body to the town morgue. Okay. Whoever wrote that page made sure it read like a story. Like a scene from a thriller. I hate all of it. The text said we'd find more. I believe it. But what's the purpose? They're twisting events to create their own narrative to do... what? Entertain some fantasy? Projecting their desires? Are we characters or the audience? Witnesses to their design? All the above? It's all about hey, control. You made it back. Deciding Good. what happens to who. Don't let it drag you in. Too late. I'm already hooked. I need the next chapter. I hope you didn't get stuck in any of those big puddles. Crazy flooding down there, huh? Just like I said. Deputy, I want the body taken back to town for a proper examination, ASAP. Well, sure, but the coroner won't be back in town for another week after Deerfest. Not a problem. I'll do it myself. Oh, and Sheriff Breaker called to say he's got the bookers at the Oh Dear Diner in town. Oh, and I've got a key to the gate. It's a shortcut back to the parking lot just up the hill. Thanks. Let's get the car, drive to Bright Falls, and talk to these witnesses, the bookers. At the diner, right? I, I could use a cup of coffee. Let's try that shortcut the deputy mentioned. Sounds good. Seems like a nice town so far. Murders aside. Pretty woods. Cute lodge we got set up in. We should go for a hike if we get a chance. Now you're just being mean, Anderson. Deputies aren't exactly up to the task, but hopefully the sheriff will be more helpful. Not a surprise about the deputies. Doubt they see much stuff this gruesome. <clears throat> Is that a kid's lunchbox? 
An Alex Casey movie lunchbox. Casey hates the endless jokes about coincidentally having... Detective. He hates those cheesy crime books. But he really hates the movies. fit the clues all together yet. Heart removed, tripod, tracks leading to a dead end. A tripod? For a camera? To record a snuff <gasps> film? Maybe. And why take out his heart just to throw it away? To stuff in something for us to find. I'm gonna go check something out. Be right back. I'll be back in a second. Roger. I think I saw something. It'll only take a minute. I'll wait here. Finding a Casey movie lunchbox out here can't be a coincidence. Another message? Here we are. Let's drive back to town and meet the sheriff at the diner. I can't get that manuscript page out of my head. I've never seen killers reach out so directly before. Damn impressive work so far. With your technique, these hunches were moving fast. I wasn't sure about taking a case so far from home, but I'm thrilled to be here for this mystery. Need to swing by the lodge to get anything from the field office? No, I'm all set. I'll park there anyway. I want to walk to the diner, get a feel for the town.
The diner's just up the waterfront. Shouldn't keep the sheriff and our witnesses waiting. I smell coffee. Let me guess, the FBI. Welcome to Bright Falls. It's nice to have you here. I got you both some coffee. Oh, it's Washington's finest. Nice to meet you, Sheriff. I'm set for coffee. You know, I wouldn't say no to another. I'm Agent Saga Anderson. This is Agent Alex Casey. Tim Brinker. And let me just say, I'm happy you two are here. Frankly, we could use the help. Your deputies said you had a couple of witnesses here. They made them sound like suspects. Mulligan and Thornton are still on about that? No, no, the bookers don't strike me as the murdering type, but you can decide for yourselves. They're just inside having coffee and pie to calm their nerves. I'll see what they have to say. Casey, you compare notes with the sheriff. Take your time. We've looked through the case files you sent over, Sheriff. Have you had many people besides the known victims go missing? Sure. But it's slowed down ever since Cauldron Lake was fenced off. Let me guess. Missing person cases spiked around 2010. The fence was built just after. Yeah, that's exactly right. Hmm. I can't believe that happened. I still feel like I'm gonna be sick. Come on, Ed. Have some pie. Don't take your mind off things. Good to see you. Excuse me. I'm Agent Saga Anderson. Are you the bookers? That's us. I'm Tammy, and he's Ed. Hello, officer. Just Saga is fine, Ed. So, are we being charged with anything? Because if not, we'd love to get back to our hotel and decompress after what we saw. Take a bath, screw into pillows, that kind of thing. We're not charging you. I just have a few questions. Nothing to stress about, okay? What were you doing at Colgen Lake last night? I'm a writer. True crime. We're here from New York, doing some research on a famous novelist, Alan Wake, who went missing here. I was down at the lake, getting some details. Perfectly legal. So what did you see in the woods? This naked dude came out of the lake, and he was acting crazy, shouting weird shit at us. He must have been on something. Unless skinny dipping at dawn is a thing around here. Then we heard shooting. We ran into these psychos in deer masks. They were tearing into the naked guy with knives, like some kind of satanic cult. And then we bolted and called the cops. What makes you say it was a cult? <laughs> the masks and knives aren't in us. Smith. They were shouting, cult of the tree. The cult of the tree. Cult of the tree. Oh, and then we found out. The whole thing was 
terrifying. That's all. The Cult of the Tree. What aren't the bookers telling me? I found their necklace. The symbol is two triangles. The Cult wants their spruce tree bag, Tammy. Finders keepers, Ed. My publisher will want this on the cover. Tammy found something. A necklace belonging to one of the cultists. The bookers were at Cauldron Lake. Why? This was built to hide what's there. They say the rider fell in the lake. Private party. No trespassing. My book has questions past the bolt cutters. They broke in for the sake of Tammy's book. Nothing to do with a the murder. They were telling the truth. We're dealing with an organized group of killers. The cult of the tree is behind these murders. This case just became much more complicated. I'll need to start a new file. But it's my first cult case. Exciting. I need to know more about the cult of the tree if I'm going to shut them down. So you found something there, right? A necklace these cultists may have dropped. Okay. Wow. How did you put that together? It's evidence. You need to hand it over. Okay. Okay. I told you not to keep that thing, Timmy. Thanks. This could prove to be helpful. Do me a favor. Stick around town for now in case we have any more questions. <laughs> like we'd even dream of missing dear Oh, God. Saga! Saga Anderson. As I live and breathe. I thought we'd never see you back here after that awful, awful thing happened to your baby girl. How are you? Um, I'm sorry. Who are you? I don't know what you're talking about. It's me, silly. Rose. You know me. I don't think I do. And what horrible thing happened to my baby girl? She drowned. Your daughter. That's so weird. You don't remember. Thanks, how do you know I have a daughter? Oh, I know what this is. You're blocking out your traumatic memories. Happens on TV all the time. No. You're mistaking me for someone else. <laughs> if you say so. A cult murdering a man is pretty extreme. Why didn't you tell the police what you saw? We did. We told those two idiot deputies they didn't listen. And they wanted to throw Ed and I in jail for that murder. You know, Bright Falls is just Alabama with bigger trees. This is my case now, and no one is throwing you in jail. If you need anything else, just come to me. Got it. Thank you, Saga. I 
need something to force this open. Hey there, Mr. Deer. You remind me of a dream I had. Quotes is a part of the job. Can't dwell on it too much. So, Rose, help me out. How do you think we know each other? We all know each other around here. It's been a while, but I never forget a face. Or a coffee order. Guess I just have one of those faces. Seen anything out of the ordinary in town lately? Suspicious people in deer masks? No one's suspicious. But soon enough, there will be lots of happy people wearing deer masks for Deer Fest. Practically everyone will be wearing one. Good to know. So, we're not being arrested? We're all good, Ed. You can ease up now. Yeah, no, I wouldn't count it. All set? My guys have Nightingale at the morgue if you're ready to go take a look. Let's go. Well, Casey, I got a lead. Looks like we're dealing with a cult. The cult of the tree. A murder cult. Fuck. Have you heard of this cult of the tree, Sheriff? Only the urban legend. If you're in the woods at night, the cult will get you sort of thing. We're not gonna find out you're the Grand Wizard or something, are we? I played some D&D back in the day. The wizard was always my favorite class. Who else to keep this city clean if not I? Who else to protect its citizens from morning, the dangers Sheriff. of unsanitary like conditions? Ah, uh, morning, Ted. Yeah, real important guests. Deerfest. Always draws a crowd, right? <laughs> Too true. More the merrier. Have a good one, Sheriff. Hey, what do you know about that waitress from the diner? <laughs> Rose? Yeah, she's a bit of a space case. Always has been. Why? What'd she do now? She kept saying that my daughter drowned. She even knew my name. It was all very weird. Rose has a talent for saying the weirdest thing possible. But... Best not to take it personally. Hey, boss. Corpse is downstairs, ready to go. Yep, in the morgue, all prepped. I'd like to take a closer look as soon as possible. Lead the way, Sheriff. Oh, this is the Bright Falls Sheriff Station. Anything you need, just uh, let us know. We appreciate the support, Sheriff. See you around. So we share a morgue with the funeral home next door. It's a shoestring budget. 
I guess you guys don't have that problem, though. Our only coroner rotates between a few other towns, and he's away this week, but you can handle this, right? I'm qualified to perform examinations. Yes. Something about morgues. They always cheer me up. I can't say I feel the same. He's joking. Okay. Let's take a look at our patient. I'll start with the external inspection before performing the internal examination. What was the cause of death? What other clues can the body... There's writing on here. Can't make it out. Writing? How'd they manage that? This looks like text. A tattoo? Nightingale didn't strike me as a tattoo guy. Aha. Uh -huh. They did leave something inside his chest. The body shows signs of being submerged in water post-mortem. It doesn't add up. Defensive wounds. They put up a fight. Time to see what Nightingale's body can tell us. wound is cause of death but the corpse is bloated waterlogged doesn't add up there's definitely something in his chest did the killers leave it there Same type of page we found at Cauldron Lake. Nightingale hunted Saga. Didn't see her. The Taken could not see into bright light. Light hurt them, made them vulnerable. Nightingale had no heart, but here he was. Killing. Someone's created a fucked up fantasy about us. Hey, hold on. We found these kinds of pages. I didn't think they were relevant to this case. I have them right here.
My gun's out in the hall. Gotta get it back. Gotta move. Now. He didn't have a heart, but he still got up. The page predicted all of it. It helped me fight him. Oh, oh, oh. He, he just disappeared? What the hell is going on here? We need to figure that out if we're gonna do anything about it. Somehow we need to make sense of this. There is no rational explanation to what we just saw. I'd love to blame this on mass hallucination caused by inhaling volcanic gas, but we both know that's bullshit. This was supernatural. Well, I'm glad you were the one to say it. Now we can figure out a way forward. Saga was back at Cauldron Lake. Saga had to pursue Nightingale into the overlap 
Finding a way in would be difficult. A ritual. Saga would learn how. Stop the monster. Right before things got crazy, Sheriff Breaker just vanished. Maybe the Sheriff knew more than he was letting on. Hmm. He seemed anxious, like he dreaded what was coming. One more mystery. The victim of a ritualistic murder turns into a monster. Is there a connection? Looks to me like the cult of the tree is performing rituals to create monsters. Hmm, maybe. We need to start with learning this cult's goal, their purpose. It doesn't budge. A dead man turned into a monster. Light as a way to fight him. Pages predicting the future? There's no rational explanation. This is the case we must solve. No.
The page places Nightingale back at Cauldron Lake. Calls him a Taken. We need to head over there, stop him, before anyone else gets hurt. Okay. We, we heard gunshots, y'all okay? Did you get spooked by the bodies? Sheriff Breaker disappeared. Nightingale turned into some sort of a monster and there are offices down. You two handle things here. We need to get back to Cauldron Lake immediately. Fuck me. That's terrible. We'll do what we can, man. That's crazy, right, Thornton? Nightingale's heart was missing. How could he do anything? He's dead. Well, yeah, right. Well, that's all crazy talk. Monsters aren't real, and what do you mean the... The sheriff disappeared. Like poof? He's gone like magic? Magic's not real. Magic's not real. Right. I like it. No. Monsters aren't real. Magic. I need something to cut this. Shiny, that's pretty cool that they did that. First time I get a message from them, something. Did somebody call for a tour guide? Oh, wow. Coscola Brothers Adventure Tours. Unforgettable tour experiences at affordable prices. That's right. I'm Ilmo Koskala, voted best coffee roaster slash tour guide by Coffee World Magazine. And I'm here to give you the tour of a lifetime. But Ilmo, I've heard the government has seized restricted access to many local nature attractions. That is true, Yanko. Many local attractions have recently become fenced off by the government. And that's why, at Koskala Brothers Adventure Tours, we say, but the government, we have bolt cutters. Oh, wow. You think of everything. And we'll take you anywhere. Hiking through the scenic Elderwood National Park. Fishing the crystal clear waters of Bright Falls Dam. Bird watching at Majestic Mirror Peak. A tour of a lifetime is just one phone call away. Book now to get a 9% discount on this limited edition Oh Dear Diner Coffee Thermo. Casey's favorite brand tastes terrible. My first ever prank on Casey, a true classic. If only the rest of the Bureau knew what a softy case he is. Eleven remaining. Miss you, kiddo. I'll be home soon. Eleven remaining.
My client has been held here long enough. Are you gonna let me speak to them or not? Uh, just a moment, ma'am. Someone will be right with you. How many times do we have to do this, Walter? Huh? I'm at my wits end with you. I want out! Something bad's going down! I can feel it! Let me out! Do you think I like throwing you in jail every other day? No, I don't. Do you have any idea how much paperwork you're causing me? What's I can't get through this. Nightingale and his cult are dangerous. We need to be prepared in case things escalate more than they already have. Can you call it in, Casey? A smart choice, Anderson. Yeah, Agent Casey here. Yeah. We need backup. The Bright Falls case. Whoever you can spare. ASAP. Think we'll actually find Nightingale at the lake? The pages haven't been wrong yet. We can't assume the person writing these pages isn't playing. I agree. But it's our best lead. Mercetta won't roll over on the issues. I'm gonna take a quick look around. Meet you back at the car. See you in a bit. A lunchbox again. <coughs> Who's leaving these out here? It's so quiet here. Now Enjoy why'd you day. go and do that? Stomping around like that and scaring the poor little thing.
better is better. Yakko, we're going to Akuga's house to drink some brewskis. Are you coming? No, Ilmo. I'm very busy wearing a turtleneck and drinking wine. Like an asshole. Oh dear, I know what Yakko needs. I'm a beer to the rescue! Bring out your inner wolverine with Ava beer. Wow, this is the best party ever. Thanks, Ama Beer. Ama Beer is a traditional Finnish lager, and we drink it the Finnish way. At the bar, while actively avoiding small talk with strangers. Getting blackout drunk on a boat during midsummer and trying not to drown. In the sauna, using your beer can to hide your pipeli from wandering eyes. Partaking in the Finnish tradition of Kalsarikannit, drinking at home alone in your underwear with no intentions of going out. It's not sad if it's intentional. Alma Beer, your Finnish drinking adventure starts here. Good to see you. I'm gonna go check something out. Be right back. Got it. I've been working on this float for a month straight. If it rains, I am gonna lose it. Ruin all the paper mache. Did you check out the town, Anderson? Just getting my bearings. Ready to go? Waiting on you. So what's good here? Any nice restaurants? A bit of a foodie. Hello. I'll be back in a second. Roger. Rest easy, buddy. Rinse and repeat. Clock out, get a beer. Or maybe. I need to come clean, Anderson. I know why Nightingale was here 13 years ago. He was chasing a writer, Alan Wake. Tammy mentioned him. She's writing a book on his disappearance. You know the detective character from his books, Alex. Casey. Yeah, I've heard the jokes at the office. Cold case Casey. Murder case Casey. <laughs> Sorry. Ha uh ha. -huh. It's the same name, similar job. It's the first thing anyone thinks of. It annoyed me, but that was it. Then, ten years ago, I started getting strange letters in the mail. Fragments of prose describing murders. You've heard the stories about what happened in New York. Some of it, at least. Bodies started to pile up. It was a murder cult. Turns out the fragments sent to me were from the crime books of Alan Wake. The cult was copycatting the murders from the books. In their heads, they were performing a ritual to bring Wake back. Their imagined prophet. After that case, I started looking into Wake's disappearance on the side. 
And you thought this case might be connected to him? His name does keep popping up. I just wanted you to have all the facts. Next time, give them to me before we find ourselves in the middle of a horror story. The page says Nightingale's in something called an overlap. Need to figure out exactly what that means. I'm happy I'm not in charge of this mess. Thanks. Let's start looking for Nightingale where he was killed. Great. This area is supposed to be close to the public. The writer of these pages knows what will happen. Because they're behind this, or because they can see what's coming. Impossible things are happening here. A world operating on different rules. I need to understand this strange logic. To see the clues. To solve the case. more about the cult of the tree what sort of cult refers to themselves as a cult in my experience they don't we're not seeing the full picture yet hey hello there how are you folks doing those restricted areas hello saga anderson are you two supposed to be here i'm il mokoskela fantastic to meet you and yes, Stephen here hired me to show him through the woods. He's in town on important government business. Fixing this impressive piece of hardware. I work for the FBC, ma'am. I'm authorized to be here. And I bet you two are here about that murder. Nasty stuff. How's it going? What is this thing? It's just a monitoring station, ma'am. The Federal Bureau of Control checks volcanic activity and air toxicity levels. No need to worry, though. It's mostly for research purposes. That's one gorgeous wetter saga. <laughs> Looks Nordic. I bet a family member made it. How did you hear about the murder, Ilmo? Do you know anything that could help us? People tend to tell me things. The Koskala brothers are kind of a household name around here. Speaking of, uh, if you're looking for some fun, stop by Watery. Just down the road from Bright Falls, there's our Coffee World Amusement Park. There's sauna, sauna de vista. <laughs> and we offer a variety of guided tours, hunting, fishing, hiking, whatever strikes your fancy. You name it, we probably got it. My mother made this sweater for me. How do you know? I knew it. My mom used to knit those sweaters for me and my brother. Watery. My hometown was founded by Finnish immigrants. So between your name and the sweater, I figured your family might be from Finland too. Suomi, Finland. Ulla, Karjalanpiira. <laughs> Klaus, my mom's family is from Sweden originally. I don't know much about them beyond that. The sweater is just something to remember her by. Stephen, we're investigating a murder that occurred nearby. What can you tell me about your bureau? Nothing that isn't classified, I'm afraid. But I don't know anything about a murder. Operations here are run by a different department. I'm just here to make some repairs. The wiring on this thing frays every couple months. Yep, that's the raccoons. They grow real big here with teeth like you wouldn't believe. Can not run through a garbage can. Thank you. I need to head out. Steven. 
Let's get to the murder site, Casey. A lot of things about this case keep bothering me. But one thing feels really off. Breaker's disappearance. I don't get the feeling Nightingale was responsible. Hmm. He was about to give you more of those pages. Something didn't want us to have them? Or was protecting him from Nightingale? Spontaneous combustion? I don't know what. Not the kind of disappearance we normally saw. Hello, this is Agent Anderson and Agent Casey, FBI. We'd like to come in and ask a few questions pertaining to an investigation. Nice talking to you, too. Crime scene's drowning. I never minded rain. Feels like cold. No sign of Nightingale. But the page did place him at Cauldron Lake, in an overlap. So how do we follow him there? Maybe something around here will tell us. Hey, Casey, what's the forest favorite shape? Please, Anderson, just one case without the rent.
the locked box. Is that the cult of the tree symbol on it? Wonder what's inside. I should take a look around for a way to open this thing. A creepy twig sculpture? I feel bad for these guys.
notes and ammo. Looks like they're tools of the trade. Bare feet. Nightingale. I'll see where these footprints lead. Can you come through the crime scene one more time, KC? Just in case? On it. If anything comes up, I'll radio. We've seen this symbol before. Hmm. Good eye. After we find Nightingale, what then? I've never arrested a monster. I've watched you arrest plenty of monsters, Anderson. You know what I mean. Monster monsters. Light worked against him at the morgue. That might be the only way to stop him from hurting anyone else. Monsters? Overlaps? Rituals? What do you make of all of this? Hmm. The killers are usually the ones performing the ritual, not the detective. Acting out their sick fantasy. They may be trying to get you involved, forcing you into their twisted world. But with dead men coming alive, the word ritual starts to have more weight behind it. We need to look around, learn what this ritual is. There's another lunchbox. Tracks lead into the water. Where do you I can feel something? A presence. I know Nightingale is somewhere around Cauldron Lake. The tree was a threshold. This place and the dark place. <laughs> You're in over your head. Next stop. Caldera Street Station. The threshold, like a doorway, leading to Nightingale. 
It's somehow connected to a tree, which is ladle. These aren't the same tracks that were here before. They're headed into the tree, not out of it. My flashlight burned the dark stuff away. It was covered. The fuse was in place. Saga stepped into the witch's hut. Inside, a bright light. There were objects that stood out to Saga, as if the light had manifested them. The witch's hut. Okay. I trust the pages to lead me to the overlap. This is the witch's hut. Check it out. Okay. I found another page. Following up on a lead. Keep checking in. Roger. This fuse is busted. This one looks good. People should really stop littering, though. Another page. Making progress. The image of the witch in the sign. Saga addressed the witch. The smudged line on the heart. The second part recited from memory. I brought you the heart, witch. Show me the terror. Saga pushed the heart through the hole in the sign.
priority took care of all this. The page from the Witch's Hut seems to be describing some kind of ritual. Nightingale's heart disappeared from the morgue. Where is it now? To get into the overlap, I need to find Nightingale's heart. Read the line imprinted on it, plus the line on the page to the witch's ladle sign. Then push the heart through the hole in the sign. These stashes could contain clues about the cult. Better keep an eye out for more. I need Nightingale's heart to get to the overlap. Where is it? Just leaned close. He was there, but he was risen. Nightingale was there. The opposite of sunspots. Who said that? That's not it. I don't have what I need to find Nightingale's heart. There must be more. Nightingale's heart. Where is it? Meanwhile, they played cards in the general store. The witch had stolen his heart. Get out of my house. Nightingale's heart is at the general store, in a fridge. to check the general store for the heart. Okay. Let me see. I'm headed to the general store. I think I know how to get into the overlap. Uh, roger that. I followed some ATV tracks in the woods and got a bit turned around. Did you get lost? I've only been lost once in my life, Anderson. The years I spent with my ex-wife. I'll find my way back, don't you worry about it. I think I'll mention the general store. I need to check it out. <laughs> 